Welcome everybody to the second lecture of antennas which is titled Fundamentals Parameter, Fundamental Parameters of Antennas. Today we're going to talk about the basic definition and terms and parameters for antenna. You can think about this lecture as sort of like vocabulary of uh, the antenna uh, study. So the first part or the first uh, thing related to the antenna is the antenna pattern. The antenna pattern is sort of the base for the majority of the definitions of uh, the antenna. So what is the antenna pattern? It is a representation of the radiation property as a function of space coordinates. So it's a spatial or 3D uh, description of the distribution of the radiation, radiated power from an antenna. So it is a spatial distribution. It's space dependent distribution of the concentration of the radiation energy out from the antenna. So most of the time, this uh, radiation pattern is used in the far field. Far field is far from uh, the antenna. The radiation pattern can be like a field pattern that describes mostly the electric field distribution or the amplitude of the electric field distribution. Sometimes it is the power pattern. So it's the radiation power distribution. Also like the radiation pattern most of the time is used as normalized to its peak. So we get the maximum of uh, radiation density or the radiation power and normalize it, divide all the radiation pattern by this one. So the radiation pattern is sort of like drawn with its maximum equal uh, absolute unity, unit one in absolute mode. And also like to show all the details, as in many different cases in engineering, we use uh, the dB scale, logarithmic scale, so that we can uh, see more details or like, or like we can see wider dynamic range. So this is a 3D of one of the antennas. You can see like we have a peak here, then as we go, we get like sort of a null or minimal then another smaller peak so on so forth so this is the 3d uh, antenna pattern it looks good but it is not that useful uh, to study the properties of the antenna as we're going to see so it's nice representation in 3d looks attractive but in terms of usability as you're going to see the 2d uh, is more useful and more frequently used as well in order to deal with the radiation pattern, you need to be like skillful or like fast and accurate and knowledgeable in determining uh, in dealing with coordinate systems. The three different coordinate systems that we uh, usually deal with Cartesian, cylindrical and spherical and moving from one to the other is uh, needed for all electromagnetic courses. So as I said, the 3D looks attractive, but the 2D is more uh, useful. And that's why we usually like have some sort of like a cross section cuts at certain angles from the 3D and presenting them in 2D. So like here, let us look here for the shape of a radiation pattern. So this is here like a field better in a linear scale. This is power pattern. Of course, the power pattern would be uh, smaller because it is, uh, again, both of them are normalized. And because the power is proportional to the square and the square of a fraction is a smaller fraction. So you will find the pattern thinner. So this is absolute field pattern, normalized absolute field better and this is normalized power better uh, and here this is the uh, db logarithmic scale 
so all these details that are sort of like hidden here for the power it's very visible here here it's some somewhere in between so different uh, one different uh, representation of radiation patterns show like different details we're going to talk about the beam widths and so on and so forth so the, the radiation pattern is actually a 3d because it's a distribution in space distribution of radiation power in space so it is a 3d by nature but for practical usage we like use a series of 2d plots similar to the cross sections that we show in uh, this sketch so for example we say we plot like the azimuthal uh, distribution so we have a cut at a certain uh, phi and we show the variation of the field with theta or we have a cut at a certain theta and we show the variation of the field as a function of phi we can draw the radiation pattern in polar coordinates or cartesian ones the polar is more polar like this is more uh, informative and it's more frequently used but also like this uh, cartesian representation also some ha does have like some uh, usages as well one very important parameter for the radiation pattern is the half power beam width okay so the beam width is sort of like this angle and from the center looking like towards the peak we define certain angle and the first angle that we define is the half power beam width half power is where the power of the main uh, loop so this is the main loop this is secondary loop this is here back loop so this is main loop those are side loops and this is called back loop so the angle between this 0.5 maximum power this angle is called half power beam width so half power beam width is related to the 0.5 on the power or 3 db on the logarithmic scale or 0 0.707 on the linear field pattern all of those are the same uh, definition it's the definition for the same uh, angle half power beam width another uh, parameter that also uh, useful as i said this is called the main loop those are side loops this is the back loop so their names uh, is telling their meaning another parameter of the antenna is first null beam width first null is the first minimum in each direction starting from the peak so here this is the first null this is the direction the null doesn't need to be zero it can be like really uh, zero or it can be like the minimum so the first minimum from both sides the angle between them is called first null beam width the ratio between side loop level is the ratio of the peak of the side loop compared to the peak of uh, the main loop from the radiation pattern of the antenna we can like categorize the, the antenna so for example we have isotropic antenna which is a hypothetical one this is there is no real isotropic antenna but it's useful definition hypothetical one or virtual one that doesn't exist but we assume it which is an antenna that's radiating in all direction with the same distribution so it has a uniform uh, radiation pattern the radiation pattern looks like a sphere uh, surrounding 
the antenna at the center. Directional antenna is the antenna that is pointing, like those ones, are directional antennas. So they, have, they are pointing the majority of its power in one direction. So it's called directional antenna. There is another very useful uh, antenna that's called omnidirectional antenna. So like this one, in one direction, it is uniform and in the other direction it is selective so like here for the azimuthal it is uniform for the elevation it does have uh, a certain uh, like distribution and this is useful to have like for example if you think about wireless uh, base station you want the bar to be distributed in all direction all as a musical direction like equally but on the elevation level you need the majority of the power to point towards earth and very little goes uh, like for up like towards like the sky why because the users are on earth so also for like radio broadcasting uh, stations same thing you need like omnidirectional uh, antennas for mobile the handset because this way the orientation of uh, the mobile is not causing you to lose the signal or something so omnidirectional antennas does have a lot of uh, applications as well when we're dealing with uh, antenna many times we read about e plane and h plane so the e plane like the antenna in the far field is radiating uh, transverse electromagnetic field TEM wave so E and H are both perpendicular to one another and both of them are perpendicular to the direction of propagation and the E plane is defined as the plane that contains the, the electric field as well as the direction of maximum the direction of uh, maximum uh, radiation so this is the direction of maximum radiation and this is the direction of the electric field so this plane here is the E plane with the similar definition this uh, plane here is the H plane the radiation from an antenna can be sort of like classified into three different zones the zone that is very close and attached to the antenna this is called the near field and the radiated field in this region is sort of like reactive reactive means it's stored energy then we have this green region here it's called radiation near field it's some sort of like a transitional uh, region then we have the far field where the electric field is really like a transverse electromagnetic wave and those regions are not that strict so there is no like barrier saying okay here this is near field and here this is radiation near and like here this is far field and this is like uh, far radiation field no Yani, so each region does have its own uh, properties but the barriers between them is sort of like a region not just like a boundary so the transition is not uh, very sharp sorry or the definition of the region are not that sharp the, the transition from one region to the other is sort of like a range rather than just an exact value Uh, here like also like with uh, antennas we are using solid angles so I'm introducing the meaning of solid angles so on planar uh, like plane on a plane we have the radian like here we can define the, we know what is this angle represent and it is the measured in radian it's the ratio of this arc compared to the total 
uh, peripheral of the circle. So one full circle is corresponds to two pi uh, radian. And any angle on this plane, you can see its ratio out of this two pi, and this will be the measure of the angle in radian. For uh, like solid angle or conical angle, just think about the angle that is surrounded by a cone with the head of the cone at the origin and this cone is intersecting with a sphere. So like a sphere, which is a 3D or like solid angle, represent four by stradian. And if we have, as I said, like a conical area or like a conical angle or like a solid angle that is sort of like bounding certain area, the ratio of this area to the area of the sphere is the stradient angle as a proportion to four pi. So the stradient equal the area on the sphere divided by r square. So if this area is infinitesimal, so this angle would be sine theta d theta d phi. So this is the meaning of uh, solid angle. It's the conical angle or the angle uh, sort of like bounded by a cone. And its definition is the area of the intersection uh, of this cone with a sphere compared to the total area of the sphere. This is the stradient angle of this cone divided by four by, which is the total angle, total solid angle of a sphere. Stradient is, yani solid angle and stradient are uh, something frequently used with antennas. So for antenna, the antenna is sort of like a transducer. It takes electric energy and transduces it or converts it into radiation energy. So, so the flow of uh, electromagnetic power in this uh, like device is something very important to study. So when we have electromagnetic field, we know that it's electric field and magnetic fields coupled together and modeled with Maxwell's equation. So we know that the curl of E, so which is Faraday's law, equal minus partial B partial uh, T, and Baer's law, curl of H equal J plus uh, partial D partial T. If we look into this relation, the divergence of E cross H, the left hand side here can be expanded into this form. The form here, so we can just apply Faraday's law, and here we just apply uh, Ampere's law. Developing this further, when we have like a linear system, which is a simple system, a linear and isotropic system, the B equal mu H and D equal epsilon E, J equal sigma E. So the divergence of E cross H does have this expression because mu, as we said, it's a simple uh, medium, which is isotropic and with constant uh, parameters. Mu is constant with respect to time, so we can take it outside, and we can try to put H uh, inside by doing this. We divide by two and take the H uh, inside. Why? Because this is, uh, simple harmonic expressions and we can do the same with E. So the right hand side now does have this expression. The value here is the stored magnetic energy. The value here, the stored electric uh, energy. So 
So those two terms together is the total stored energy. The term here is the ohmic dissipated energy. So the left hand side represent the rate of decrease of the total stored energy minus the rate of ohmic losses. So from the conservation of energy, if this is a decrease in the total stored energy, so the stored energy is decreasing, so it is either consumed as heat or like ohmic losses or it is going somewhere out of certain uh, surface. So if we apply the divergence theorem on both sides, so the left hand side will be E cross H dot DS, the right hand side will be integrated with respect to uh, volume. So integrating both sides with respect to volume and use the divergence theorem, the right hand side is a decrease of total stored energy and this is the ohmic losses. So the left hand side must be the power going out of this closed surface and this is called the pointing vector. And this is mainly proved from the uh, conservation of energy. The pointing vector does have the units of power density. So it's watt per meter square. The expression for field that we used before is the uh, simple harmonic expression where we, for a wave that is traveling in the z direction, we use, use to write it this way. So this is an instantaneous mathematical expression. And this is exact, when we write this, we mean that, but we omit, or like we make the time dependence sort of like uh, implicit, just to have like a smaller writing format. And when we write this, what we actually mean, we mean that the real part of that. So like this format means that format means that format. So those three different formats are interchangeable as far as we are doing linear operations on the field quantity. Linear operation means that we are adding two fields or subtracting them, dividing by or multiplying by a constant. But the pointing vector does have the multiplication of two field, two fields uh, quantity. So we must yani, identify which form that we're gonna use. They are not interchangeable anymore because it's the multiplication of uh, two uh, quantity. So what is meant by E cross H is the real component of E cross the real component of H. And this doesn't equal the real component of the product. No, they are not. The real cross real doesn't equal the real of the cross. Here, real cross real equals this quantity. Uh, the real of the cross is this expression and they are not equal. So we pay attention about the meaning of pointing vector is the real cross product. The real, it is not the real of the cross product. So we need to pay attention. Also like many times when we're dealing with uh, power, instantaneous power is not something of interest. What is more interest is the average power and average here means the average bear period so the instantaneous power does have this expression here and many times we are interested in the average uh, again here average with respect to full time period this is more important so the average power does have this expression and mathematically you can prove it's equal to half 
uh, the real part of E cross H conjugate. Okay, so this is the average power, which is uh, the average with respect to period, the period of uh, one full cycle of this oscillation. So this, again, this is the pointing vector, and this is sort of like a quick review from uh, 304, also we covered this, 304 is electromagnetic waves, also we covered this in uh, microwave for transmission line and waveguides as well. One example here that I'm not gonna pay much uh, time, I will not spend much time on this, is that the pointing vector also is applicable uh, in cases different than plane wave. And here is uh, an example of this application. This is an example from electromagnetic wave course 304. So it's just for your information. Another important antenna parameter is the radiation intensity. So we dealt with radiation density before, which is uh, what per meter square. So it's the density of power over certain uh, like area. When we're dealing with radiation, think about it this way. So the antenna is emitting power in certain direction, and this power is spreading as we go further. So if you take just like a cone, part of this radiation pattern, just focus on a cone, the amount of power that goes into this cone is a fixed amount of power because it has started from the antenna and it just continue in its way. And the further you go, the area of the cone where the power is spreaded is gonna increase. So the power density decrease. So the further you go, the power density will decrease. While we're dealing with the same amount of power, let us say the total power in the main beam. It's a constant amount, but the further we go, in, like in distance, the radiation density will go down. That's why it is introduced the radiation intensity. So the radiation intensity is the radiation concentration in a single solid angle. So it's a watt per stradian. So in this case that we were just describing, where we have a cone, so the total amount of power is constant, and also the solid angle is the same, irrespective of the flaring out of the cone. So the intensity within this like cone area or solid angle is a fixed number. It doesn't matter how far you go because it is angle, solid angle dependent, it is not uh, area uh, dependent. So that's uh, like a, another property that is very important uh, to describe the directive nature of or like the directivity or the distribution of the 3D bar radiated from uh, the antenna. So the intensity equal R square multiplied by the density. So the density is the watt per meter, intensity is the watt per uh, stradient, and the symbol for intensity is U, which is power per unit solid angle. A very important parameter of the antenna is directivity. Directivity is the ratio of the radiation intensity in a given direction to the radiation intensity average over all direction. So radiation intensity average over all direction, the symbol is U naught, and this is sort of like the distribution or the radiation pattern of uh, isotropic antenna. Every direction does have the same amount of power emitted too. So the ratio between the real antenna, radiation power distribution, and the hypothetical assumed isotropic antenna 
radiation power distribution is called the directivity. So it's just saying that with this structure, let us say you go back. So this would be like isotropic, hypothetical isotropic antenna. Every direction receives the same amount of power concentration. And here, this is a directive antenna, an antenna that's concentrating more power in that direction. So the ratio of this power compared to the average power, the power average over all directions, represents the directivity of the antenna in that direction. If we take this direction and we calculate the radiation uh, intensity in that direction and compare it to the average out uh, radiation intensity over all direction, it will give us the directivity in that direction. So on, so forth. So the directivity is u compared to u naught. u naught is the intensity of isotropic antenna, which is the average out power intensity of our all direction, which is the total radiation power divided by 4 pi. So directivity equal 4 pi u in this specific direction of theta and phi divided by the total radiation power. And many times when we say directivity, we mean the maximum directivity. So many times when we say just directivity, we mean the maximum directivity, which is denoted by D naught, which is the maximum intensity divided by the average intensity, which is four by maximum intensity divided by total radiated power. To calculate the total radiated power, we need to integrate the intensity over all possible solid angles, which is the variation of theta and phi from theta equal zero to theta equal pi, phi equal zero to phi equal two pi. Because the radiation pattern is mostly like very complex, find out like this integration in a closed format or like analytically is something yani, very difficult. So many times we need to do this numerically. So numerically is just like convert the integration into summation. So this integration here to find the total radiated power can be conducted this way. So d theta will equal by divided by n. So let us say n equal 180. So we just add every one degree. Phi, delta phi here is two pi over m. Let us say two, uh, m here is 360. Again, divided into like one degree. And we do the summation of the function. U is a function that is depends on theta and phi. So we vary theta and phi according to this summation. We sum them up. So this is sort of like the numerical uh, calculation of summation that close enough to the integration. If we need like more accurate results, we just increase m and n. So have a smaller delta theta and smaller delta phi. And we uh, like solve this. So we need to do this or like we usually do this uh, frequently to calculate the total radiated power. Another antenna parameter is the antenna efficiency. And there is a number of efficiencies associated with antenna. So there is the total antenna efficiency that takes all the losses into consideration. What are the losses that associated with antenna? So we have the ohmic losses in the conductors that is built that see yani the antenna is built from some conductors some material conductors and dielectrics the conductors does have limited conductivity so there will be some losses the dielectric does have some limited isolation so there will be some losses as well and those are called i square r losses because the losses is happening in a form of uh, heat there is other losses because of the reflection at 
the input port of the antenna. This is also uh, like affecting the efficiency of the antenna. So the overall efficiency is the multiplication of those three parameters, the losses, ohmic losses of conductor, ohmic losses of dielectric, and the losses because of the reflection. Because ER and E, sorry, EC and CD, most of the time are hard to calculate analytically. Many times it is measured experimentally. So in many cases we combine them together as ECD. So total efficiency equal ECD, which is the ohmic losses in conductor and dielectric multiplied by the reflection uh, loss. So B radiated equal ECD multiplied by BN. BN is the power input to the antenna. So we talked about directivity, which is some sort of like a parameter for the radiated power. The reference that we have is U over average radiated power. There is very similar coefficient or parameter of the antenna that's called the gain. And the gain is referred to the input power. So instead of U divided by average uh, B radiate radiation, so it would be U divided by the average B input. So the gain is power intensity in a certain direction divided by uh, the total input power average over the 4 by. So gain equal 4 by intensity divided by uh, N, which is for uh, by divided by EC so we can have here like BN is related to B radiated by this coefficient so the gain will equal so we can replace Pn by B radiation divided by ECD. So the gain will equal ECD multiplied by directivity. So the relationship between the gain and directivity is this efficiency coefficient of conductor and dielectric loss. And G naught, which is the maximum gain, is related to the maximum directivity with the same efficiency factor. Also, we can take, so here, if we consider power N to be a little bit before the antenna, so we can take power N that is really goes into the antenna, or we can take power N, the power that really goes or try to go to the terminal of the, of the antenna. If we consider this BN at this point, reflection will be taken into consideration. If we talk about the power that is already delivered to the antenna, the, the reflection will not be uh, considered. So if the antenna is matched to the feeding network, no reflection and this expression is uh, valid. If we're talking about the input power without, when we have a mismatch, so we need to have ER. So gain, absolute gain, will take the reflection coefficient into consideration. So like, when we talk about those parameters, we need to know actually how they are measured or how they are reported so that we get the correct meaning of them. Another important parameter for uh, the antenna is the beam efficiency. So the beam efficiency is describing, is just a ratio of power radiated in a certain cone divided by the total power radiated by the antenna. So it's again, it's uh, an indication of the directivity and efficiency. So if we calculated the total power in a certain angle, certain solid angle, and compare it to the total power radiated by the antenna, this gives us the beam efficiency. For example, I would say what is the beam efficiency of the main loop? So what is the total power in the main loop compared to the total power radiated by the antenna? So it tells me like how directive 
or like how much concentration of radiation energy in the main loop compared to like the total another antenna parameter is the bandwidth so the bandwidth definition is not a single definition it can be many different definitions but the idea of bandwidth is we choose one parameter let us say polarization purity let us say it's the directivity let us say uh, the radiation power whatever it is we choose certain parameter that varies with uh, frequency and put another criteria let us say it's the maximum gain let us say is 10 db and they would say okay the bandwidth is 10 db plus minus sorry 10 db minus 2 so from 10 to 8 this is my bandwidth of the gain the gain varying by 20 percent so the 20 percent gain variation or like algorithmic gain variation equal so and so hertz which means that i'm going to choose a specific parameter that varies with frequency and the put a criteria the criteria would be for example like input impedance varies by 10 percent so plus minus 10 percent variation from the nominal value of our frequency this is the definition of uh, bandwidth and the bandwidth is reported in different ways for broadband antenna many times it is the ratio of upper to lower uh, frequency so the, because it's a broadband sometimes it's 10 to 1 2 to 1 5 to 1 so the upper uh, frequency is much larger than the lower frequency and this is very common in the low frequency antennas uhf and vhf this is kind of things and we have other kind or other category of antennas that is narrow band so the antenna is really working at a single frequency with a little uh, bandwidth and the bandwidth in this case is divided like defined as five percent or like two percent in a percentage way refer to the center frequency so if the antenna is working at 10 gig with uh, like two percent so it's working at 10 gig plus minus 10 hertz so the total variation is two percent which is uh, 20 hertz 20 uh, 20 uh, which is sorry it's 0.2 giga so this is the variation of the or the bandwidth this antenna is fulfilling a certain criteria within this bandwidth so it is reported in percentage input in impedance of the antenna is a critical uh, parameter when we connect antenna to a generator so the antenna represent uh, a load to that generator so the generator generates certain voltage the generator does have internal impedance source impedance or generator impedance which has a real part and imaginary part so the antenna is representing some sort of loading on this generator and this loading is represented this way rl which is a representation for the ohmic losses inside the antenna xa is the reactive loading of the antenna rr represent the radiation uh, power transduced or converted by the antenna so the antenna takes certain electric power part of the power will be consumed in its internal structure as ohmic losses and the rest is sort of like radiated out so this like equivalent circuit for this like antenna generator circuit would be like this generator the internal uh, impedance of the generator the losses and reactive loading of the antenna and the radiation uh, resistance of the antenna so this is actually not real resistance that's like generating heat it's an equivalent uh, parameter 
to the power that is radiated out by the antenna. For this circuit, it is sort of losses. We put power, the power escapes out of the circuit and goes to air, which is radiated. And this is uh, represented equivalently by this radiation resistance. So the antenna impedance equal RA plus it has a real part and imaginary part. The real part is two components, radiation resistance and loss resistance. So the radiated power from this circuit equal one over two I square two because this is sinusoidal current. It's working at certain frequency. So the B radiated equal half I absolute square multiplied by RR. The losses is half I generator squared divided by RL. IG, the I generator, equals the voltage of the generator divided by Z total. Z total equal the internal impedance of the generator plus the antenna impedance, which does have this format. And we also can calculate the losses inside the internal structure of the generator. And many times we are searching for maximum power delivery to the antenna, how this generator would deliver the maximum amount of power to the antenna. And this would happen when we have conjugate matching. Conjugate matching is happening when the two real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are uh, conjugate to one another. So they are different in sign, equal in magnitude. Another antenna parameter is the antenna vector effective length. So the effective length of the antenna is antenna parameter that is related to its radiation field not related to its structure. So if the antenna is an aperture antenna, like a horn, still it does have an effective lens. If the antenna is a loop, it does have an effective lens. If the antenna is a batch, or like microstrip batch antenna, it does have an effective lens. So the effective lens has nothing to do with the physical structure of uh, the antenna. And it is a radiation property or a far field uh, property. So the vector effective lens or the effective lens is related to the radiated field by the antenna uh, with current I input in its terminal. So it's relating both transmitting and receiving modes of the antenna. So if we have the antenna working as a transmitter, it will radiate some uh, radiation field. If we write down the radiation field in this format, this is the uh, intrinsic impedance of the media and this is a uh, uh, constant, Helmholtz co constant, and this is the input current to the antenna. We can describe LE. LE is a vector that is related to uh, sort of the polarization of the field. So it would have like theta component and phi component, both components can be depending on theta and phi. Nothing is depending on R. So if we express the radiated field in that format, this will be the effective length of that antenna. When the antenna is in the receiving mode, V open circuit of the antenna. So when the antenna is receiving and its terminals are kept open circuit, the open circuit potential between the terminals of the antenna equals the E incident dot product with LE. So this is the definition of uh, LE, the effective 
length of the antenna or the vector ev effective length of the antenna and as you can see it has nothing to do with like the physical structure the antenna can be a loop it can be an aperture it can be a reflector it can be a microstrip batch any form of an antenna all of them we can find uh, an effective length of the antenna for them using this uh, relation why do we need that we're going to see shortly why do we need this parameter we're going to see shortly antenna polarization is the polarization of the radiation field generated by the antenna in the far field or the far zone so it's uh, electromagnetic waves and its polarization can be linear or circular or elliptical we covered the polarization and its definition and its meaning in electromagnetic waves uh, course 304 and in general it's linear or circular or elliptical what is the polarization means it means that what is the contour drawn by the electric field over time when we just have a fixed front plane like we have a wave front we choose any wave front in the far field and we take a fixed wave front or plane at the far field and observe the contour or the track drawn by the electric field over time this track can be either linear or circular or elliptic and this is called the wave polarization for circular and elliptical uh, polarization the rotation of this track or contour can be like clockwise or counterclockwise so it is either right hand or left hand the idea here if we put our thumb both thumbs left and right hand thumbs along the direction of propagation and we observe the rotation of this polarization contour if it is along the fingers of our right hand it's right hand polarization if it's uh, along the fingers of our left hand it's a left hand polarization and here like you can watch this video to visualize and refresh your memory about the polarization and its meaning and what is the difference between the three different uh, polarization types here we have uh, another antenna efficiency parameter which is the polarization efficiency the polarization efficiency is defined as the ratio of the power received by the antenna from a given plane wave of arbitrary polarization e incident to the power that would be received by the same antenna from a plane wave of the same power flux density and direction of propagation whose state of polarization is adjusted to maximize the received power so it's the if we have an antenna this antenna does have a, a vector effective length le and we have incident power e incident the power that can be received by the antenna in this case is proportional to le dot e incident similar to here okay if the antenna is adjusted to maximize the energy in this case the dot product would be just a multiplication if e incident and le are in the same direction this will equal le square multiplied by e incident square so this is the maximum sort of like power that can be achieved and this is the real power that is achieved under these conditions so this is sort of like in case of full polarization matching and this is the real case this ratio is called polarization efficiency and in words this is the meaning 
Another important parameter of the antenna is antenna aperture. Antenna aperture is sort of like the equivalent area or the effective area of the antenna. The antenna can be a wire and it still does have an effective area. The concept of effective area is easily uh, understood if we're dealing with uh, horn or dealing with microstrip batch antenna because it does have a real area and we are talking about the effective area. But again, this is similar to the effective length of the antenna. It's related to the radiation bar and the interaction of the antenna with the radiation uh, power it is sometimes it is really related to the physical structure of the antenna but most of the time it is general for any antenna even if the antenna is a wire that is hard to define like a physical area for this wire it does have an effective area so in words it is the ratio of the available power at the terminal of the receiving antenna so this is a receiving uh, mode parameter to the bar flux density of a plane wave incident on the antenna from that direction assuming that we have polarization matching so this kind of polarization efficiency is assumed to be uh, equal to one for the definition of uh, antenna so the only thing that's affecting here uh, that's affecting the received power is the aperture the polarization is taking out of uh, the picture so the effective uh, area is the area which when multiplied by the incident power it gives the power delivered to the load so this is why it's called like effective area we have like an incident wave and this incident wave does have certain power density power density when it's multiplied by a certain area it will give us power so we calculate the received power we know the density not intensity density what per meter square of the incident wave in that direction and we say the received energy equal the effective area of the antenna multiplied by the power density of the incident wave so this is the definition of the effective area of the antenna so the antenna does have more than one equivalent area or effective area so there is a scattering area when an incident power like hits on a receiving antenna part of the power will be received part of the power part of the incident power will be scattered this is scattered uh, power can be used to calculate the scattering area the scattering area equal the scattered power divided by the uh, power the incident power density also we can say the loss area of the antenna when the power incident power or field being on uh, an antenna part of this power will be lost into the internal structure of the antenna we can calculate the loss area of the antenna which is the lost power divided by the incident power density we can also define the capture area capture area is the total bar that is used by the antenna and the power used by the, the receiving antenna part of it will be received and this is the effective area part of it will be scattered scattered backward or scattered in any direction and this is the scattering area part of it will be lost and this is the loss area so the capture area of uh, the antenna is the sum of those uh, three parameters and different antenna parameter is used in different applications so it's good for uh, antenna engineers to be familiar with all of those uh, ones And there is a relationship between the directivity and the effective area of the antenna because most of the time the antenna is a reciprocal device 
its property for transmitting and the property for radiation are like isotropic which is the same radiation pattern as receiver and as a transmitter so the effective area which is a receiving mode parameter is related to the directivity which is a transmitting mode parameter why because both of them is sort of like an indicator of the directivity of the antenna or the focus of the antenna in with like as a parameter of direction so directivity is telling you in this direction this is the maximum in this direction is a minimum so directivity in the like as a function of angle gives you an in, like it's the radiation pattern and same thing for effective area in different area it's also the radiation pattern in the receiving mode so we should expect that they are related to one another mathematically we're going to show that they are actually related so if we have this structure we have antenna one antenna two if antenna one is uh, transmitting so the tot the output power density will equal b transmitted divided by 4 by r square so this is sort of like the total uh, power density in an isotropic mode so note for isotropic mode so the transmitted that reached to antenna 2 is the isotropic multiplied by the directivity of the transmitting antenna so this is the transmitted power this transmitted power will reach antenna 2 it will be multiplied by its effective area in that direction and this is the received power so this is the expression for the received power and we can say transmitter directivity multiplied by receiver effective area equals this expression here so now let us switch antenna 2 and antenna 1 functionality so antenna 2 will transmit antenna 1 will receive and we can get the expression directivity of antenna 2 which is now uh, like let's take the r it was the receiver multiplied by a t which is the transmission the lift or antenna 1 uh, effective area it's equal to this ratio so if we keep everything the same we'll have that the left hand side of both equations to equal one another so directivity of antenna one i'm sorry directivity of antenna two multiplied by the aperture effective area of antenna one equal directivity of one multiplied by the effective area of two so the ratio of directivity uh, 2 divided by effective area 2 equal directivity of uh, 1 divided by the effective area of 1 and this is for any two antennas so we can easily say that d over a is a constant for any antenna because here we have we started with no restriction about antenna 1 or antenna 2 so d over a for any antenna is a constant uh, quantity and taking it from here if we assumed like antenna uh, the transmitter antenna one to the left is an isotropic so the directivity equal one so the effective area of an isotropic antenna equal a divided by d of the second antenna which means that this ratio of d over a is a constant for any antenna and we can choose like any simple antenna to find the relation and it would be valid for own for any uh, other antenna and the ratio here is that the effective area maximum effective area of an antenna equal its directivity multiplied by lambda square over 4 by so d over a is a constant and this constant is related to lambda square over uh, 4 by 
if we take all kind of losses into consideration the maximum effective area will equal this value multiplied by the polarization efficiency multiplied by the uh, sort of like the reflection uh, efficiency multiplied by ECD so the, the power delivered to the antenna maximum is like this part of it will be lost in conductor and dielectric part of it will be lost because uh, impedance mismatch and part of it will be lost because a mismatch between the receiving antenna and the circuit it does feed so this also like uh, one way to calculate uh, the aperture of the antenna and the one that is reported in the data sheet mostly is this number so those one or this number sometimes we like report ECD uh, separately and polarization mismatch it depends on your configuration so it is not reported in the data sheet but this is when you have like a specific problem you can find out uh, like those ones a very important uh, and famous equation that is related to uh, antennas is the Fry's transmission equation this equation relates the received power to the transmitted power to the configuration of the two antennas so if we have like two antennas separated by distance r antenna left right is seeing antenna uh, left with an angle theta and phi with respect to its own uh, coordinate system antenna left is seeing antenna right with theta and phi of its own coordinate system what is the received uh, signal at this antenna here on the right so b received at this antenna will equal the radiation density that reach here multiplied by something so what is reached here is the total power transmitted from here multiplied by directivity of the transmitter so this is the power density at this point this power density will be sort of received by directivity of the receiver multiplied by uh, lambda square over 4 by which is this effective area lambda square over uh, 4 by and there is 4 by r square which is uh, this one here for the transmitted power so transmitted power equal power transmitted multiplied by directivity of the transmitter uh, divided by 4 by r square so this is the spreading factor here when we combine the spreading factor with the uh, aperture ratio we'll have lambda over 4 by all squared the efficiency of the transmitter will affect the transmitted power the efficiency of the receiver would affect the aperture and the polarization efficiency also need to be included so B received at this antenna is related to B transmitted from that antenna with this lengthy uh, equation and this is called Fry's transmission equation if there is a mismatch in either if there is a mismatch here and there is a mismatch here so we're talking about the power output of this uh, generator and the power received by this receiver and there is a feeding mismatch here or delivery mismatch here we need to take like those into consideration so the equation will be uh, longer and this is sort of like the general uh, Fry's transmission equation that relates the received power 
to the transmitted power with all kind of antenna parameters for this setup and by the end of this lecture we'll have uh, our first homework which is due on uh, a week from our discussion session so it's due on March 18. Thanks for watching the video and meet you in the discussion session. Goodbye.